Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about whether or not a OTF or out the front can make a true survival knife. Now, in this video, I want to do this kind of as my 10K sub appreciation video where I figured I'd do something kind of outlandish, kind of crazy, but it still fits the theme of the channel and that's ultimately survival in bushcraft and of course knives. Now, for this uh, poor unfortunate soul that's going to be absolutely wrenched today, is the Microtech Ultratech. And before we get any further, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram, it helps a ton. And also while you're at it, let me know if you think that this knife down in the comment section below will survive or still be functional, like you guys can see here after the test. Okay, spoiler alert, as you can probably see the smoke in the background, it did survive the test, of course. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to talk about some of the experiences and I'm gonna roll in some of the footage, of course, of what I think. And I ran this knife just through kind of some generic tests. Primarily, I put it through a lot of batoning because I think that's what most people think will be the failure point of an OT of an OTF or an out the front. Now I do also want to note that um, when we talk about OTF, similar to all knives, there are wild variances in quality. Of course, the Microtech Ultratech is made by Microtech, a reputable brand. This knife, of course, is made in the US. So we're starting off with a quality blade or a quality knife as a whole. Now, the one interesting thing to note, and I think what makes OTFs actually reasonably tenable or reasonably viable as survival knives, or at least can endure more rigorous tests, is the fact that the action itself, because this is an OTF, like a typical folder, it folds out. So your hinge point or the point where the knife hinges is naturally coming back down towards your fingers or towards towards the handle of the knife. An OTF is functionally different because, because it shoots straight out. So this doesn't have any hinge point or at least not a traditional hinge point. And because of that, the actual tang of the blade is quite a bit longer than you would think. In fact, the tang on Microtech uh, Ultratechs go to about where the uh, jimping on the bottom of the handle ends. So you have about a good inch to inch and a quarter of tang of this blade hiding behind here. Not to mention you also have a good sized carriage. So the carriage is ultimately what carries the knife back and forth. And so you have that carriage that adds to the strength. And lastly too, to add to the strength of the knife is that all of the components uh, that at least go up and down are all held in this billet of aluminum. And while aluminum isn't necessarily the strongest material, it's certainly not weak either. It's gonna be a lot stronger than things like plastic or wood or other things that you know might actually make up a handle like a rat tail tang uh, fixed blade. So it's going to be quite a bit stronger than those uh, things like I said, like plastics or woods. So you actually have a lot going for this knife when it comes to strength because like I said you don't have a hinge point for this knife to fail on. It literally goes out and back and so because of that it is inherently strong and I think you guys could see here I was really thumping on it. Now granted this is seasoned or at least old um, I believe this was alder and so it's not super super hard wood but i wanted to come out into the wilderness and actually you know like grab a piece of wood from the outside instead of you know trying to fabricate this with a two by four you know this is if you crashed a plane or were stranded this is real life wood that you would actually find uh, in you know in this region so that's part of the reason why i wanted to do it with you know real live wood out here even though this isn't the toughest wood per se this is going to be realistically what you would find uh, out here in addition to that too i think the other thing that helps it with batoning is the fact that the blade is still reasonably small this piece right here is about mm, a little more than wrist thick though you know pretty comfortable what you'd find and what you'd want to at least get a fire started um, but you know the spanning of this blade as you can see you're not going to get a whole lot of span length on your blade when you go to baton it so it kind of helps it in the fact that you can't go baton a 10 inch tree with this blade obviously that would probably break it but uh, within reason, reasonable wood does just fine. Of course, like I said the action fires just as hard as it did. It doesn't really have any more play than it already did. 
So the next thing to that, I did some uh, feather sticking and feather sticking was probably the most disappointing part about this. Now, granted, this is an everyday carry knife for me, so I didn't really, you know, do things like feather sticking with it. And certainly this knife is not dull. Well, it might be a little dull now, but it was not dull at the start of this test. It had its factory edge. And I think that uh, you guys could see with the way that this knife uh, cut notches into wood, it is certainly not a dull knife. Like it is certainly sharp, but the edge angle behind the edge is quite abrupt and so when you're trying to feather stick I found it very hard to catch the piece of wood without going too far similar to how I run into with convex ground knives it's very hard uh, with this particular grind on this bevel to actually catch the wood without going too deep into it so that part was a little bit disappointing however as you can see I was kind of able to take advantage of the fact that this knife is such a good batoning knife so I basically just toothpicked a lot of the uh, wood. So I turned it, instead of feather sticking it and using larger pieces of wood, I just turned the wood down smaller so that it would burn more readily. So it's kind of something that I adjusted to. And once again, in a real life survival situation, if you had just this knife and you know a baton you would probably want to do the same thing is just make all of the wood or all of your kindling just a little bit smaller to compensate for the fact that you aren't really able to effectively uh, feather stick with the knife now, like I said, notching went pretty well with this knife because it's certainly sharp and it's certainly not dull. So I was able to dig sideways or go in cross grain into wood quite readily and quite easily. And I found that that was, it worked out pretty well. And uh, yeah, I think that overall, when it comes to notching with the knife, if you were trying to build traps, make whatever you needed, um, that would go pretty well with this blade. Lastly was fire starting. Now I do have to say, I, it, this one took me a few attempts. I did cut the camera um, once or twice to kind of just get myself kind of more prepared. It did take quite a bit of tinder prep and actually, honestly, I kind of got lucky and caught a little piece of dried grass that I had there. It was using as part of tinder. Uh, you know, I caught that on fire and then kind of put everything else on. So I will say um, striking the ferro rod off of the back of this blade is not optimal. It will, as you guys can see here, throw pretty good sparks. In fact, better than I was originally expecting. Once again, I came out here with never having used this knife or any OTF in this type of situation. So I wasn't really sure how well it was going to perform, but I know that this blade kind of has this uh, swedge or multi-angle spine on the back of it. And so I wasn't expecting it to throw sparks terribly well. And once again, it, this is by no means like a sharpened spine. It definitely does not throw sparks great. But as you can see, without any, you know, kind of false editing, I did start the fire with the spine of this knife striking the back of a ferro rod so you can do it with this knife it's just uh takes a little bit of patience and probably a bit more striking than i would like but uh yeah it certainly is tenable and doable with this knife so you can process wood you can start fires you could make traps you could you know carve notches you could do a lot of different kind of maybe more rudimentary survival skills with this knife but as far as it goes i figured this would make a really interesting video uh, because a lot of other knife testers or survival knife testers gear testers like myself either live in states or countries that are not very permissive of automatic knives as a whole as you guys know on the channel i have a few automatic knives a couple otfs um you know some button press button or push button autos so i thought you know it'd be pretty cool to take one out and uh, another reason I was motivated to do this is I know a lot of Air Force and Army people um, carry especially Benchmade Infidels but OTFs as a whole in their military service and so it's like if you were a part of that and you did have to use your auto or your OTF knife for survival tasks would it, ha would it handle them and uh, how would it hold up to that use and abuse. So overall, I'm happy to say that the Microtech Ultratech, this isn't speaking for all OTFs, but the Microtech Ultratech is strong enough and robust enough to handle reasonable bushcrafting tasks. And if you needed to start a fire in a pinch, if you needed to do you know quick survival tasks in a pinch, this is definitely not the best knife to do it, but it can do quite a bit more than you might think. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this survival OTF video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.